how to start a food business with little money. So if you're looking to create a food business, I'm gonna run down a few tips and pointers. I'm actually gonna give you 10 things specifically that you can do if you are looking to create a food business but don't have a huge budget. My name is Damian Roberti. I am the founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. Welcome to my channel. My wife and I are food entrepreneurs. We have been for a little over 13 years now. I've been in the food industry for 30 plus years and operate million dollar businesses online. We've sold over $1 million in snacks, baked goods and candies on our, on our Amazon store alone. And I have been online on e-commerce for a couple of decades now. So let me dive down into some things that I've learned over the time that I've started my food business. I have actually made some good decisions. And to be honest with you, some decisions financially have cost us a huge challenge uh, personally and of course in our business, but I have overcome those things and learned from those mistakes. And we are still in business and we're still pushing forward. So I'm gonna give you these 10 things. I'm actually gonna go from number 10 all the way down to number one. The number one thing is the most, I think the most important thing and most important aspect if you're looking to do this. All right, so let's dive right into it. So number 10, reinvesting your profits. This is something that I didn't know much about when I first started, but it is crucial, really crucial guys, because be honest with you with any business, any small business, of course, with food businesses, but anything that has to do with a business, you need to know cash flow is the lifeblood of the business. You have to keep moving money in and out when you first launch and first start. And it does take a handful of money to, to get up and running. Now this is gonna be dependent upon the type of food business you wanna do, but no matter what it is, reinvest your profits. So long-term plan, you wanna plow back initial profits into the business to fund gradual expansion, rather than actually like seeking large loans, which is actually something I did, to be honest with you. I actually used credit cards and that was probably not the best decision I made, because you gotta keep in mind, if you use loans to start a food business, the thing of it is, is that if it doesn't pan out, you're still responsible for those loans or the credit card bills and anything that you're obviously borrowing, you have to pay back, whatever it might be, you still owe that money. So plowing, putting profits that you're actually making back in will help you kind of eliminate the need for seeking outside investments to start, okay? Now the benefit, well, it keeps the business sustainable and growth is kind of organic, meaning that you're not having to have to fund it constantly just to keep it afloat, okay? You get me? So reinvesting your profits is number 10. Number nine, collaborate and barter. Yes, believe it or not, the idea of bartering has been around for centuries, believe it or not. But you know, the idea of borrowing or giving someone a service or a product for them to give you a service or product in exchange, you know, the strategy, okay, how does this work? So partner with other small businesses for mutual benefits. For example, like you could supply desserts to a local business. Um, supplying desserts to a local business in exchange for promoting their brand. So by promoting their brand and giving them kind of exchange of maybe if you're doing desserts, for instance, a bakery of some kind or something like that, you can actually help local businesses in exchange for promoting your product through their restaurant, okay? What's the benefit? Well, it reduces costs and increases exposure, of course. Well, reducing costs is the fact that you're already collaborating with other businesses, getting exposure to their clientele or their customer base already. Let's say, for instance, you wanted to do a baking business, okay, and you have some cafes or coffee shops. It would make sense for you to go ahead and supply them with desserts and say, hey, look, this is from the bakery down the street. This is from Damien's Bakery. So you got to check them out. You know what? So the exchange is that that's the barter. That's the collaborative effort. Not costing you much money at all other than just supplying them initially with that. And then, of course, remember, tell them, hey, this is just to get me started, get it up and running. This isn't going to be a constant relationship down the road. You can actually buy from us. Number eight, maximize pre-sales and crowdfunding. All right, here's the approach for this. Use platforms like Kickstarter to raise funds before starting a full operation. Actually, you can offer pre-orders of your products at a discount. Now, crowdfunding has been around for probably about a good 30 or 40 years now, really online as far as that's concerned, probably about 30 years, 25, 30 years. But when it first came out, everyone was kind of really un new to the idea. But the idea is basically getting people to give you money and believe in your product and your service. Now the benefit, okay, well, so what's the benefit for this, Damien? This generates initial capital to fund startup costs and validates market demand. So that means like if you have 10,000 people that are giving you even $5, those 10,000 people are obviously showing market demand. They're showing interest in your product. That proves that. And you're getting $50,000 to help get the business up and running or expand it. So number seven, use cost-effective ingredients. This is always important. A lot of times people overthink and they go really, really high end with their ingredients. Now I'm not saying go out and buy junk, don't get me wrong, but a lot of times people get a lot of unnecessary ingredients and it's just way too costly. So what's the strategy here, Damien? So source ingredients from local producers or buy in bulk to reduce costs. Now you go online, you can buy tons of ingredients at huge discounts, okay? 
don't buy little one pound, two pound, three pounds this. You need to get like 25, 30, 40, 50 pound bags of whatever it is, right? Because that's going to reduce your costs. And that's going to help you understand your budget if you have not a lot of money to launch a food business. You want to focus on creating dishes or food items or packaged food products that make the most of cheaper ingredients. Not cheap ingredients, just cheaper. Okay, so it also may, may want to get some samples. Like if you find some suppliers, get some samples, okay, and try out the ingredients. Don't be afraid to do that because a lot of times people love that because you're going to drum up a new account for that customer. Benefit of this. Okay, so this lowers the cost of goods sold, okay, and increases your profit margins right out of the gate. Number six, apply for licenses and permits. Why is that kind of upon on this list, David? Well, I'm going to explain something to you, and it's about... <laughs> If you don't pay them on time, if you don't get these, you can get penalized and that's going to cost you more money. So what's the necessity of this? Well, it ensures that you actually comply with local health and business regulations, which may actually include a food handler's license or even health department permits or inspections and even like a business license. So if you don't get those and you start operating a business and someone finds out about it, basically, and they will because you, you're you going to have to have them, you could get cost of fines. You can get charged with fines and stuff. And that's going to be a much more expensive startup, right? So cost saving tip, doing the research and the application process yourself can actually save you a ton of legal fees. So whatever it is, the type of food business you're opening, do a little due diligence, find out, do some research. What is that that I need to do? Number five, do it yourself branding and design. Now today with chat GPT and AI and a lot of actually design it yourself websites, like even Canva. I love Canva. I use Canva a lot. You can create logos. So you utilize free design tools. You don't have to pay someone a lot of, you know, down the road when you're making money, maybe you want to hire someone professional, but you don't necessarily need that off right off the gate. Create your own logos, menus, promotional materials, all kinds of great stuff, okay? In Canva, you can actually use their free service. They're one that's not paid. You can get some really basic uh, hands-on stuff that you can just create yourself. What's the benefit of this? Okay, well, it saves money on a professional graphic designer. And let me tell you, they're very expensive. Um, I actually studied graphic design in college before I got my degree in business. And I found out they make they charge quite a bit, a few hundred dollars or so an hour. So there's really no need for that, though, when you first start. You can do it yourself. Number four, leverage free marketing tools. So tools, what are they? Using social media platforms. This is something that just you can as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter to build a following and market your business. OK, engage with local food bloggers and influencers to gain exposure and even give hey, give them some free. If you have influencer bloggers, give them some samples of your stuff. Let them spread the word for you. You don't have to be charged that. You don't have to charge for somebody to do that. What's the benefit, Damien? Well, that increases your brand visibility, right? And then also customer engagement without the cost of traditional advertising fees. Okay, so if you have an agency do it for you, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars or even more. Number three, test your concept. All right, so what's the strategy behind this one? So testing the concept. So you want to start small with a limited range of products. Test them in local markets, maybe even like a pop-up food pop-up event or even through small scale catering events, if you, if you want to get into catering. This is a great way to test the idea. You'll get feedback, okay? So what's the benefit? This is exactly what I was gonna say. Allows you to gather customer feedback without a significant initial investment. So again, you don't have to put out thousands of units to get tens of thousands of feedbacks and responses to your website or maybe in your blog. Just get some local people to give you some ideas of what it tastes like, the goods and the bads, if they like, if they don't, what's the packaging like, and then that feedback is worth its weight in gold. Number two, all right, focus on a niche market. Remember, focus, you want to niche down. You want to, don't spread yourself too thin. Don't offer, if you want to get into a seasoning business, spice business, let's say, don't get into it and think that you're going to have 12, 13, 14, or two dozen different types. Just get a couple of them under belt and start with that. So the strategy behind this is basically identifying that niche market with the specific needs that are not being fully met by an existing business. Now, this could be like vegan snacks, maybe. Uh, gluten-free desserts, which is actually a huge, huge market, ethnic cuisine and such. The benefit of this actually is a well-defined niche can actually re reduce your competition and actually allow you for a premium pricing on your products. That's something that um, focusing on that niche market can do. All right, so we've come to number one, all the way down to number one. And remember, if you need some help, by the way, I do offer consulting. I'll have a link down below this video if you need a one-hour consult with me. You can actually talk to with me directly. I've actually helped launch over 800 food businesses since 2017. I'd be happy to help you out and assist you any way that I can. So number one is choose a low cost business model. All right. So what does this mean? So what are the options for this, Damien? Well, is I consider starting with a model that requires less upfront investment, such as home-based or even catering businesses, a food cart. If you want to just do something mobile instead of a food truck, try a food cart first pop-up event instead of like a huge retail market 
or even local markets and events that you can actually put your food or product out there. What's the benefits of this, Damien? Well, reduces the need actually for like a physical storefront. When I started my bakery business, I actually did that. I got a brick and mortar and it was very expensive. I should have probably tried to do some pop-up stalls and food carts, but I don't look back at it like that. I just learned a lot from what I did because the benefit is actually the physical storefront, which can be one of the largest expenses you won't need, okay? So starting a food business with the limited financial resources can definitely be a huge challenge, guys, but it's definitely possible. A little bit of careful planning, some strategic decision-making, and, and basically following the steps that I just mentioned, you definitely can have a chance at making it work. So if you have questions about this, if you're on a budget or if you started a food business on a budget, let us know in the comments section, and I'll see you guys on our next video.